It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, it's that time again. Time for another episode of AgriChat. This is episode 282. Tonight I'm joined by Ammo. I exist. Ashgar. Hi. Grace. Hello. Tam. Hello. Tam, Tam is just being quiet now. And Thalen. Hello. So what's going to get edited out is me scrambling furiously to figure out which number we're on. But, you know, I, I think <laughs> I think it's just going to, like, the silence will compress out fine. Um, tonight... Oh, missing from our list. Whoops. Yeah, it was. Like, I, I think I did that. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm kind of like you know, an anchor person, like if you put it on the teleprompter, I'll read it, which Ash is going to grief me with, I'm sure. I have previously griefed you with? Yes, yes you have. Um, so it is a new year. Um, this is, because we don't know how to do what we're doing, this would be the beginning of season seven? Or, or our seventh year of podcasting? Something like that? Anyway, happy 2020. Hope. Hopefully we don't all die this year. Except that actually shows up as like season seven, episode two hundred and eighty-two, right? Yeah, it will. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, when we were asked to pick between episodic content and seasonal content, I was the why not both girl. Um, so yeah, like this is the beginning of a new year, and we usually do one of these big shows where we talk about the games that were important to us in 2019. Um, and we do so in the form of a Google form. And then Ash dutifully tabulates all of that nonsense and, and boils it down to a list, uh, which is usually somewhere between like 10 and 16 games. And we're at 13 this year. So there was some overlap. Yes. Um, and and there usually is, but like there was a significant amount of overlap. I, I found that interesting, and we will talk about that more. But let's start the list off with Trials of Mana. Trials of Mana. Trials of Mana was prior to like June of this year, known only as Second like, Densetsu Three because it had not been translated into English. It got a unofficial translation back in the days of SNES ROM hacking, <laughs> and that translation was actually not bad. I. I remember trying to play this back in college um, and struggling because Second Densetsu 3 was like a late SNES title and required way more out of the emulators than a lot of ROMs did. So the amount of frame skipping that had to be applied was ludicrous. <laughs> yeah. It was a late NES ga- SNES game. It is better in pretty much every way. Than Secret of Mana. It is a somewhat more complicated game, but it released in English for the first time this year in the Mana Collection, which drops, I think Shadow dropped during E3, if I remember correctly. Yep, no, that sounds right. And this game's pretty good. It's not the best action RPG on the on the Switch. Definitely not. It wasn't the best action RPG on the SNES, for that matter. But it's a very good one, and it's a sign of other things. Like, it is not the only game to get translated this year that has been long awaiting translation right so it was a really a weird year like that like we got a lot of things that had never been translated that's really why this is on the list it's good it's not like this is a pretty good game i'm looking forward to the remake which looks like it'll be a great game but this is on the list just as a symbol of all of the things that got translated this year yeah i absolutely snapped this up as well as the saga games in part just to like Tell them that, hey, translating these games is a good idea. We will throw you money in doing so. <laughs> I think Romantic Saga 3 was the other long-awaited translation. I mean, yeah, in, nice, in part, nice like... finally have this. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm always down with, like, supporting, you know, remasters and that sort of stuff. Because, like, really, I, I do like having nicer versions of things <laughs> that I can play on modern hardware. So, uh, the first of the games I threw on the list is Anthem. <laughs> And I have super complicated okay. feelings about this game, um, but I feel like it is worth talking about um, because there's essentially two experiences with Anthem. There is the leveling experience with Anthem, 
and the story experience with Anthem, which was just amazing. Like, I was enthralled. I loved every bit of it. And then there's the in-game experience with Anthem, which just doesn't really exist. And still, to this day, doesn't really exist. So, um, like, Anthem is this weird blend of excitement and disappointment in one game um, in a way that, like, I've not experienced in a while. And, like, I'm not sure if I have a whole lot more to say about that. But, like, on some level, I'm hoping that EA really does do what they're saying and gives them the time to figure out how to make a good game out of this. Because, like, there's something there that was enjoyable. Yeah, it almost made my list, partially because I didn't play a lot of games this year, but also because I greatly enjoyed the leveling experience. Like, it was incredibly solid and fun anthem anthem makes me think of the assassin's creed one like i don't know that i loved assassin's creed one but man did i love what it what it had under the hood if as it were like flying around and doing stuff in anthem was so fun and i want it's like i want that but more i want that but with better systems around it yeah i agree it was quite fun I would love to see them somehow pull a Realm Reborn type scenario where they just relaunch the game once they figured out how to make it into a game other than just a, a tech demo. And just, I don't know, like, like, I would even give them more money if that actually happened. I'm not um, sure I'd give them more money. But, but at this point, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think it may be too far gone um, for them to ever really recover. Um, cause I've poked my head in a couple times, like in the recent months and the content that they have put in is fun, but it's like too little too late. I would play an Anthem too, though. I would absolutely play an Anthem too. Like, like in a way that I didn't think Destiny 2 needed to exist, that they should have just, you know, kept, you know, improving Destiny 1. I absolutely think Anthem 2 is, is a worthy thing. Um, like, maybe not call it Anthem 2, though, because we really didn't get Anthem 1. We got a tech demo. Um, yeah, I don't... I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, next one on the list. I don't know for certain if I put this on the list or not, but I think I did. The Outer Worlds. I also think you did. I, I have been waiting for this game for a while, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've not quite beaten it, but... Had I not fallen into a Witcher-shaped hole, I had planned on on doing so over the the holiday break. Um, I really liked New Vegas, and I am happy to have another game kind of like that in a brand new IP. Um, I am super interested in the world of Outer Worlds, even though it is super bleak in corporate hell. I I am very interested to see more games in this series. Um, yeah. like this was a, this was a great first game in this series. Um, but I have a feeling that they can go so many more places. Um, now that they've basically proven that they can do their own version of a fallout style game. I, I really like this game. Um, I haven't beaten it yet, but, uh, I liked having a fallout style game that wasn't in the fallout universe because i don't actually like that style of post apoc I, I do like the corporate hell version of it i guess yeah i'm very totally with grace on this one like I agree with all of that i mean if if nothing else i i really appreciate that it has a full color palette <laughs> which admittedly is a problem with like you know, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. It's less of, less so with Fallout so say, 4. New Vegas didn't have that much of a problem with that. New Vegas had, like, a very yellow color palette. Fallout 3 had a very green color palette. Um, in both cases, there were mods that, like, applied normal-ish looking textures that made it look <laughs> green and pretty, and I usually ran them. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I just want to see... I, I want to see them do more with what they, they, they did with this game. Um, because, like, there's a lot of things that they did really well. Um, but it was kind of, in some ways, limited. Like, you could tell this is the a, a, an attempt at something new. And 
they probably got their legs underneath them as they continued on and I would love to see what the sequel ends up looking like or I mean even not even a direct sequel just another game in this universe okay Devil May Cry 5 I'm gonna guess Tam oh that's mine okay ammo (laughs) so the Devil May Cry series is one of my guilty pleasure series like I'm pretty awful at actually playing them but I tend to have a good time anyway so it's also I, a really cool setting. Yes. And like I didn't get to have a lot of time with this, but I borrowed it long enough to beat it and I felt like it had enough of the kind of cheesy ridiculousness that I really enjoy from the series. Like sometimes it's it's pretty silly, but it <clears throat> it's still enjoyable and I felt like it was just the right length that it was satisfying and I felt like the combat even though I'm not great at it. I still felt like I was doing some really cool stuff. And the bosses left you various ways to get through them and beat them and just kind of be creative, even with like what skills you have. And I just thought it was a really nicely presented package. Like it was, um, I don't know, it was just really enjoyable to go through. I just sat down for a couple hours, like uh, for like a week or whatever. And I just, I had a really great time playing it. This probably would have been on my list if I had played it. Four was four was definitely one of my favorite games. The yeah. uh, sort of reboot in between that I wasn't the big fan of because they got rid of all the silliness and made it a serious story. Yeah, the one that was just DMC. Yeah, that one. It's like Yakuza. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Like this, we're telling a serious story about a war between humans and demons, and no, nothing about this game is serious. Hmm. <laughs> No, I definitely play the Devil May Cry series for for the silliness. That's a lot of it. Like, Dante is just ridiculous, and I love him for it. But, um, yeah, so you get, of course, you get to be Dante and Nero from 4 again. And then they add in V, who is a very different sort of style. And I actually enjoyed playing as him quite a bit, because you're actually kind of controlling, like, Shadow's that turn into his various animal creatures and stuff. And it was really kind of unique and very different from the other two. So all around, I thought it uh, it just had a lot of variety. And yeah. This is one of those series that I've always wanted to get into that I've just not done so, mostly because I'm not even sure where to start. Four. Start with four. Four. <laughs> four. Four. And basically forget the first three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Deal. I mean, it's kind of cool that they're on the Switch now, but I mean, just, yeah, start with four. I mean, I'm probably going to definitely pick up five for myself at a, you know, at some point because I would like to put more time into it and just practice it and try some of the different things. Because I think if, uh, I remember correctly, there are a few paths you can, you know, play as different characters, but I only had time to really go through it once. So you kind of just went crit path. Yeah. Okay. Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. This is probably a Tam. Yeah, this is me. Okay. So, I think we've discussed a bunch of times on the show that I like the idea of Dark Souls and Bloodborne more than I like the actual game. Um, And I liked, I kind of liked Neo, but it, it still was a little bit too memorize this space and get it perfect. Um... Whereas, like, the actual moment-to-moment combat wasn't as important as memorizing the map. And I don't really love memorizing maps. Just not. It's There's a variety of game genres that I don't really play because I don't care much for trying to memorize a map. So is that is that why you uh, sometimes have issues with Metroidvanias? It's 100% of the issues why I don't really get into Metroidvanias. Because I don't like memorizing maps. I mean, I don't really like memorizing games. There's some stuff that I'll do enough that it becomes second nature, but like memorizing, memorization as a game mechanic is not one of my favorites. And it's always kept me out of this style of game. Um, And Sekiro was huge for me because I didn't need to. So much of that game is loaded into the combat system, which is incredibly detailed. And unlike... It, there's a lot of stuff that I can do and a lot of tricks that I can pull and and like stealth is a really big feature and something that I can do frequently and it's very focused on movement and so being able to move around at speed is is also really important and so that it basically transformed that genre into something I really enjoyed and I actually beat Sekiro um, 
which is like the first time I've beaten. Well, it was it was the first time I had beaten a game like that. Um, I also really, really love detailed sword fighting, um, which this just delivered in spades. It was like, I've got a bunch of tools, but a lot of it is I do interesting things fighting with my swords. And like there were there are a br- variety of varied enemies. It didn't um, it didn't really delve too far into the we don't know how to make human enemies interesting anymore. So now you just fight monsters, which was what kind of turned me off of Neo about halfway through. Because mm. it was that like makes sense. Yeah, it was like okay, all you do is fight demons now, and and um, Sekiro has has portions where it's like no, you you fight other other sword wielders and those are some of the scariest people or like hey you've got to somehow deal with 10 10 of these people at once or like this guy has a 10 foot spear what are you going to do about it of action rpgs have their hardest boss fights being someone that is roughly your size yeah and i and i really enjoy that because it's uh the it had it's just had it has some really really cool combat um i really enjoyed its use of space and movement like movement was really fun and yet and i got a lot of movement tricks um, I like the theme more. Like it was a really cool theme, uh, and and weirdly grounded. But yeah, I, I was a, I was a huge fan. I really enjoyed that game. It's it was fast. It was exciting. It has a real steep learning curve. But once I got over the initial hump of like here are how the basic mechanics work, uh, it felt really really good. Just like moving through the space and fighting people and being either a ninja or a samurai as the uh, situation called for okay so the next one on the list um i'm actually surprised only made it on one list um and that is world of warcraft classic that was me um i was slightly surprised how much i enjoyed it and how much everyone else seemed to enjoy it and that made the whole experience that much better I'm not sure it would have made it onto my list if I had just gone back and been mostly playing solo or trying to make new friends, but the fact that so many people were on on board with it for so long uh, made it feel sort of like the launch of a new MMO. It was tons of fun. And it also, I think, certainly reminded me and possibly reminded some other people or confirmed for some other people that no i mean some of my feelings about my early days in wow are nostalgia based and i accept that but also there are just some things that i absolutely enjoy more from those old systems that are gone in the current retail version and it was just a blast to go back and re-explore those and just I mean, laugh with strangers about how often we were dying and having to run back to our bodies. Yeah, I'm. I'm really hopeful about maybe, and maybe, maybe this is uh, this is hope. I is me being too like optimistic, but I'm really hopeful about some potential future MMOs because I feel like I want to revisit that time. But I'd, I'd love to revisit that time with like modern stuff. But like WoW Classic was a lot of fun too. Like, as you said, remind myself that no, it wasn't just nostalgia. Yeah, some of it was legitimately fun. And also, I was fairly shocked at the overall community. So it was <laughs> fun, and, and I was happy that so many of us were playing. But on top of that, I was really blown away by the community of people on our server, at least, who, by and large, were not assholes. And the interesting thing about that, though, is it like it seemed to not just be our server, Um, because like I had pockets of friends playing on lots of different servers. And for the most part, like people were on board with this is a second chance kind of thing. Like, let's let's try and see what we can do. And I still see people like posting, you know, raid shots for Molten Core that they like finally were able to get in there and finally cleared it and how proud they are. That they, they managed to, to, to kill, you know, Ragnaros. And, like, that's awesome. Like, that's really cool that, that people have stuck with it so long. I mean, if Blizzard hadn't screwed up some other PR-related things, mm-hmm. I 
probably would still be actively playing. Same, and it would probably be on my list for the year. Yeah, I got to Same. play it more. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. The, the the big problem that I had is is when that whole thing happened, um, it just like killed any forward momentum I had. Yep. Like, yep. I think it's an incredible shame because I think we all had quite a bit of forward momentum and we were having a good time, and then all of the wind just went out of our sails immediately. Yeah. Yeah, because I. Like, I had just hit level 50 and was really looking forward to getting back into the Blackrock instances. Ah, well. But yeah, I'm also really, really hopeful that, you know, maybe people will look at the reaction to the game and just be like, oh, yeah, pe- people did want those things. All, all this stuff <laughs> that got... All, all the stuff that got optimized out of the game over the years. Like, there, there was demand for that after all. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and and... In a similar vein, a lot of the a lot of the things that brought people a lot of the things that brought people to WoW and other MMOs because it had like a little it had like an interesting detail that other games didn't have like persistence or you know something to strive for over a long period of time or or whatever. A lot of that is are in other games now. Yeah, every game has that now. <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of the a lot of the like really interesting unique MMO mechanics uh have been adopted across the rest of it, the rest of the the games industry. And like I wonder I I wonder if and I hope that it means that we can go back to like that those games have carved out that space and now maybe MMOs can, you know, have a resurgence where they focus on what they do that nobody else does, which is like this big persistent space that you occupy yeah and i i guess that's we've had various forms of that conversation many times in the past but like the thing that that the always on aspect of an mmo used to be the commodity that like that got us into those games but you know wow classic you know more or less proved that like there was some of that functionality that was unique to wow that we are missing in other games and I, I hope someone can, you know, take that and turn it into something new. Like, as much as I enjoyed revisiting the past, I'd really like to see new versions of that and new worlds. Like, I I would still love to see a game that actually, like, successfully did what the devs originally wanted to do, to do with Ultima Online. I don't know if that's even truly possible, but it would be pretty cool. Okay, so, another interesting game that came along greedfall tam is this also a you yeah so dragon age origins was great it's very it has a particular world and i think and i think kodra has commented before he's not here but he's commented before about how he doesn't really didn't really get into the setting of dragon age which i can understand because it's doing some very specific things that it's easy to bounce off of uh so is greedfall (laughs) <laughs> and I and it's interesting to me to see games at a really high level. It's interesting for me to see games exploring different different settings because you don't you don't actually see a lot of like Age of Sail era games for the most part. But um, but at the same time, like part of the reason that you don't is because they're sort of fraught. Like it's really hard to with a straight face make a game that glorifies imperialism and so greedfall doesn't like openly and aggressively doesn't and yet that's the world you're in so you so you end up being you end up in a in a situation where like you have a surprising amount of power and authority and the question is to what ends do you wield it so kind of like so kind of like tyranny yeah in yeah it reminded me a lot of tyranny but you like explicitly the villain yeah unlike, <laughs> uh, well uh, well yeah, okay <laughs> like depends on your definitions like tyranny is pretty black and white about it greedfall kind of is too like it doesn't it doesn't pretend that this situation is good in in any way but it's also complicated uh and it does some it does some stuff with the setting that i think is creative and interesting um and I just, I, I made a bunch of interesting choices, um, 
the stakes feel high. I was interested in I was interested in all of the characters. It's the, it they there's a lot of like oh hey you'd like to be lawful that's super inconvenient. Um, one of the things that I remember from from relatively early on is like you need you need some supplies and for your you know trip but uh they're not on the manifest and you're like oh that's annoying you don't have enough time to get them on the manifest so you can not and then maybe you don't have the supplies that you need you can do a bunch of you know you can try to pull some strings to get them in under the radar you can sneak them on the ship yourself you know various options and so it was like okay this is neat and then on the other side you have this issue where uh hey these things weren't on the manifest so we put them in holding now you've got now you've got to get them out of a secure warehouse and there's a variety of options for that and then you discover that somebody was using the like you, you discover later that the fact that they weren't on the manifest was like semi-intentional because it was an opportunity to do some smuggling and then what do you do about that because now you're complicit and it's really interesting seeing the there were a lot of arcs like that where you make a choice that leads to another choice that leads to another choice sometimes in the middle of that you find out something or something happens that makes you feel like you would have made those previous choices differently and so now what do you do but now you're basically stuck down this path and well, and you've got to choose the the lesser of evils at some point yeah, or you try to walk it back. You know, there were there were plenty of situations where I was like, oh, hey, now I know I did a bunch of stuff that was wrong. I'm going to go undo all of that. And I had that option, and that was cool. Um, I didn't beat it, but I want to go back to it because it was, it was really fun. It was an experience that reminded me a lot of playing Dragon Age Origins. I did not make it terribly far. It does not have great mouse and keyboard controls. Uh, no, this is 100% true. It does not have good mouse and keyboard controls. I kept hoping maybe that would get patched because I would far rather play games with mouse and keyboard controls. This one, uh, I this one, uh, I wound up playing with a controller and it was it felt much better on a controller. Um, I liked this game enough. I played it a bunch on the PC, got frustrated with the controls, and actually liked it enough that I bought it on PS4 and restarted it so I could play it with a controller and it was much better. It is not the only game on this list that is playable on pc but better with a controller i mean that other game supports controllers on the pc with full buttons for whichever controller you decide to use yeah that part is nice okay on to fire emblem three houses the first game on the list so far that has multiple picks because this game is good i mean all these games are good this game's real good though i am still enjoying this game how many how many different playthroughs have you done so far emma um, I've done one. I watched my husband do a second one, and so I am working on my third now. I really, I joked for a while that I engaged more with Three Houses memes than I did the actual game, and then that became actually true. Uh, and I really need to play more of it because I really didn't. I really enjoyed it. I actually have a copy of it now. I don't have a Switch to play it on yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a slight that problem. Arrive tomorrow. Okay, one I of us. One and a, one and a half times. I suppose. This game, roughly. I, I've not picked it up because I've not had time to play it, um, but I know at some point I will try it because I've never played a Fire Emblem game other than the mobile game. This is the perfectly fine one to start with. Exactly. I've heard this is a really good starting point. Yeah. Yeah, same here, surprisingly enough, because it, like, everything about Fire Emblem sounds entirely up my alley. I don't know why I've never gotten around to playing one before. Because the first one that made it sound that way was Awakening on the 3DS. Yeah, maybe. The rest of them have also been on 3DS. I mean, I have a 3DS. Yes, and? <laughs> that, that is a truthful <laughs> statement for me, too. <laughs> I mean, I think I think also they've always sounded like they're going to require a whole, whole lot of time investment. That's still kind of true, but not in large chunks at once. Like, this is a pretty long game. It doesn't require long play sessions. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that quite a bit about this. Like, I could just play for a little bit. A lot of times, you know, just before bed. This was like my before bedtime game for for quite a while until I beat my first uh, route. Yeah, I think whenever I, I tire of Diablo 3 on the Switch, I will probably pick this up and make this my new before bedtime game. Three Houses manages to not be as uh, 
Let me just say it. Not as creepy as previous uh, entries in the series. Doesn't really have you making playing matchmaker quite as much. Mm-hmm. You generate ideal kids. Yeah, that's a bit weird. It's been a running theme. It's not quite not creepy. True. <laughs> but it's less creepy. Well, and doesn't this one also have the option to not have permadeath? It yeah, does. it's been an option since Awakening. That was the piece that always kept me away from these games up to this point. Because, like, I feel like if I'm invested in a character, I don't want to lose them. Awakening was kind of real important for the series. Yes. Yeah, permadeath is the sort of thing that causes me to do a lot of saves coming and thus end up having to spend even more time to get anywhere. Hilariously, this game actually lets you roll back time, in addition to the ability to turn off permadeath in general. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely turn off permadeath because it's more interesting that way. Or at least for me, because I get to have all of the characters. There are certainly some very entertaining characters. (laughs) And some very character characters. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you have an incredibly dysfunctional stable of people. Yes, they. you have a class, and your classmates may or may not actually like each other. Or themselves, Mostly, or they're you. they're not going to like each other, and many <laughs> of them are going to like you. But hey, that's what leveling up supports is for. It's like Some of you're... them will eventually get to like each other, and some of them won't. It's true. <laughs> it's like, likes other people, likes themselves, like you. Pick one. <laughs> okay, next game on the list is absolutely wish fulfillment for me. Someone else thought it was wish fulfillment, so I don't know who else picked it. Like, I assume Ash. Who's who's the third person that picked this game? Bloodstained. Pretty sure that's Valen. What? I don't. Which game? Bloodstained. Yes. Bloodstained. Me. Yes. Look, it's a Metroidvania. I love Metroidvanias. What can I say? I. It's a good Metroidvania. It's like, a very good Metroidvania, particularly since I didn't get it on the Switch because I don't have the Switch. <laughs> when. <laughs> Like the Switch, like Switch port is still a problem. Like it, it is I mean, playable, but it, it's so... <laughs> it's not quite there yet. But it keeps getting patched. So here's hoping someday they will make it better. I mean, it's okay, but man, is it a step down? Like a significant step down. Um, anyway, so, all the other ports of this game are fine. Yep. Yes. Symphony of the Night is probably my favorite game of all time, and this game is a love song to Symphony of the Night. Simple mm-hmm. as that. Like it's. It is it is as close to a sequel to Symphony of the Night as we will ever get. Yeah. But it also has a way more interesting setting and interesting characters and, and this game is my precious and I will I will fight to protect it for forever. <laughs> I mean I like, think I've said before, this game reminds me even more of Dawn of Sorrow and Portrait of Ruin, and I loved yeah. the hell out of those games. So yeah. I was gonna say Symphony of the Night got a sequel, it's called Aria of Sorrow. Um I I don't know. Like this game is two years too late or two years late at this point, but like that's fine. I'm happy they spent the time to uh polish it and like I played a lot of I was a backer of this game and I got to play various versions of this as it went along. I like I like there was an initial demo that was released to backers, then we got like an alpha version of the game, and then like I don't know, like three months before release we got basically the full game um and between each of those like i still have them all installed on my system and it is interesting to look at the progression of this game because it just kept getting more and more polished like when it reached alpha i was admittedly perfectly fine with that game launching um but man they 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 redid tons of stuff between that and the eventual pre-launch client and even the launch client. So I I am impressed. I am super impressed with how this game turned out. And the wild variety of play style that you can have. Yeah, just the, the massive number of different weapon types and the different crystals that you can equip. Like, th- th- there are wildly different uh, ways to run around and beat up monsters. And... And, like, I've tried a bunch of different things, and none of them necessarily seem to be an obviously wrong choice. They all seem to be equally viable. It mostly just depends on playstyle, which ones work well for you. And hopefully at some point the Switch version, you know, gets fixed to where it's also really good. Okay, next game on the list, a good number of us thought was Vaporware. Oh, boy. And that is <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order. It's like, I don't think any of us, when we first got the the announcement at E3, I think, several years ago... The announcement thought, was at the Game Awards last year. Okay, Game Awards last year. 
I don't think any of us thought it was actually going to be a real thing because like no, no. EA, yeah. EA had been on this kick of canceling anything Star Wars related that looked halfway good. No, I expected that this game wasn't real. And boy, was I wrong. And boy, am I glad to have been wrong. Yes, all of those things. Also, it's a game published by EA that has no microtransactions whatsoever. Hooray, they learned their lesson. No, oh. they haven't, but they, still. They kind of didn't. <laughs> well, you know, maybe you, just in res- with respect to Star Wars games. I don't know. You know the terrible irony, though? I played and I beat this game. And I would have, I would buy DLC right now. I would too. Like, <laughs> like if if they had DLC unlocks that weren't unlockable through the game, I probably would have thrown money at the screen and bought them. If, yeah, if if they announced DLC right now, I would stand up from my computer and go buy it in the middle of this podcast. Like I talked about Sekiro before, which I really liked because it was taking. A cool, like, the really cool, com- the, the combat that I really like from Souls games, but recontextualizing it, Jedi Fallen Order takes it a step further. It, I absolutely loved the, um, like, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, Jedi Academy 2 series. They were so much fun. Because um, it's like, I run around with a lightsaber, doing Jedi stuff, doing, like, a Jedi adventure stuff, and... You just don't get many of those games. And like, especially not action games. And Jedi Fallen Order delivers that in spades. It it captures the feeling of being a Jedi better than probably any game I've ever played. It took me a little bit to get into the story, but the story was awesome. And I love the character. I, I came to love the characters. Also, BD- BD1 is the best video game dog ever. He is very adorable. Oh, that droid is great. I have to disagree with you, but we can just let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> you have very specific feelings about that. I know. There's there's another dog, yeah. He's a very good dog. I tend to agree with Ash. <laughs> I I I'll get on the the uh the boat that BD one is the best video game droid ever though. I guess. Probably so, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I'm kinda of, I'm kinda of holding out hope now that Fallen Order apparently did so incredibly well and the mandalorian is the big hit that it is that maybe something similar to what 1313 was supposed to be might actually happen because that's the sort of star wars game i've been wanting yeah it's been even longer since there's been a star wars game like that Uh uh-huh what's up dark forces Uh, i mean this game did such a good job with its dialogue as well because like so much of it is just you're running through the planet, but like you're also commenting on what you're seeing, and it's kind of telling more story than I mean, it, it does in environmental storytelling really well. Like you see a thing, and then you have a conversation with BD1 about it, and there's exposition that happens, but like it's not I'm talking to myself. It feels more alive than that. It also has one of the coolest master-student relationships I've seen anywhere. Because also, as I mentioned earlier, the best 3D map in video games. Also, yes. Like, hey, this is a game where you've got to navigate complicated maps. Complicated maps in three dimensions. That sounds like a nightmare, except it has the best map in... Like, it, Ash is right, it has the best map in video games. To the point... The map is so good that I'm, I've been going through and working to 100% it. Because I can actually do that reasonably i want a uh i can't remember her name the master in the game but i want a game about her because she's so awesome seer seer yes i want a game about seer because seer is so awesome i will say probably the only thing that i would have liked it to have done is since this is a character that really doesn't matter or doesn't exist in the greater canon like maybe they're trying to make it exist in the greater canon but i still think like there there should have been a choice about a male character and a female character because like i know that i don't want it like it was a massive turnoff for a lot of my friends that like it does not make sense why that was not a choice that you got to make yeah well and playing having played through the game start to finish yes you double voice lines Yes, you'll double all of your voice lines for that character. But, like, 
there is absolutely nothing in the entire game that could not have just been swapped. Like, frankly, even the main character's name is fairly gender neutral as far as Star Wars names go. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> like that the game absolutely could have been and it wouldn't it, I mean it wouldn't have been that much difference from a uh from a what's this what's this called from a animation standpoint because the main character is a fairly average body type and is wearing a poncho like 80% of the time. Right. Like all of your your cosmetic options are like different forms of ponchos. Yeah. And like I I will say I don't know how I feel about running around in a poncho all the time. But, yeah, I mean sure. But yeah, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that this is the start of a series and that they I'm not even sure I want to say it would I want to see them do better with representation because that game actually is super great at representation for every character except the main character. Like, it's just got this selection of really cool characters from a variety of places, from a variety of places that all play interesting roles. And the thing is, is like, I get probably the calculus that went into this decision since I, I get this feeling that this is a game that EA didn't want them to make in the first place. I understand that there's but calculus, it, but it's it would calculus. Have improved it. Yeah, like it yes. would have improved it greatly. This one thing would have improved it greatly. But it's also it's also like the best Star Wars game I've ever played. Like even after even after that, it's the only one that competes is Kotor. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I, remember, I remember making that comment when I was first playing it, um, and and I don't mean that as like a, I mean it gives people the wrong impression that uh, it's a totally different type of game than Kotor. Like. Yeah, that, that is not what we're saying. It's just this is the best Star Wars game that I've played since Kotor. Like it's the the first one that that makes made me feel like Star Wars as a whole has made me feel over the years while playing it. Like it does an amazing job of of letting you sit down behind the eyes of a Jedi and like all the decisions that would come into play because of that and like it does a good job of making this person that has all these powers solve interesting puzzles with them. Yeah, and it and it really drives home how much your like even even a Jedi is not a one person army who can do everything and succeed at everything and win at everything. You need those other characters. And they're really, really important. Like, I've seen so many games where, uh, and especially Star Wars games, where, like, you have the the master-student relationship, and a lot of it's like, why isn't the master doing anything? Is it some weird test? Like, that doesn't make any sense, because the stakes are kind of too high for that to be reasonable. Is the master secretly evil? Because that's a common trope. That's a thing that's happened before. yeah. And like, and you sort of wonder about it. And I never wondered in this game because it's like, oh, I know what these characters are doing and they're doing things. They're not doing what I'm doing, but they are an, they are active players. And like, to some extent, I'm the muscle. Like they're solving the hard problems. I also solve some hard problems, but like, we're all in this together. And there are not many games I can think of where a non-playable basically like a non-playable character who like isn't in a party or whatever actually feels like a party member narratively like persona does it and i mean i feel I, like, I feel like, like 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 there's a couple examples that have existed like i always felt like joker felt like he was a party member even though you never got to play him in mass effect yeah joker is another one yeah 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 joker's great for the, yes joker is a great example of the kind of character i'm talking about because they fe joker feels important even though he's not like down there shooting a gun and in fact is doing some stuff that's arguably more important a lot of the time yeah, anybody can shoot a gun but like of that crew though he's really the one that shines because so many of the other people that inhabit your ship that are not player characters in mass effect are not really fully fleshed out yeah like, you get a couple conversations, but Joker felt like this was a fully fleshed out character, and that's what the characters in Fallen Order feel. Yes. Like, they have flaws, they have character arcs, you interact with them a lot, 
they're doing things like it's it's really really cool okay next on the list untitled goose game also chosen by three people honk 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 it's it's just such a nice game it's so true. I mean, it's not. You're not a nice part. You're not a nice creature. No, you're you're not nice. But the game is nice. But the game is nice. <laughs> That's why it's so important that you not be nice. One of the things I enjoyed most about Goose Game was just loading it up on my Switch and then handing it to my husband or one of my friends and just like, here, try this. And just let them start the game and just start walking around and from the word, well, honk. Just learning how to be a goose and then be absolutely terrible. And just watching the delight on their faces as they realize just how terrible they can be and how fun it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really important thing about this game is it's a game that, like, I mean, you're you're a bad guy. Like, you're the villain. <laughs> but you're a goose. Just being a goose to people. So you don't feel bad about it. It doesn't make you feel creepy like, you know, some games that put you in the villain role. Like, you're just, you know, stealing a gardener's rake. <laughs> I don't know. I really wanted that picnic. So, I got that picnic. <laughs> well, I mean, it it helps that you mostly aren't hurting people. Like, you're annoying them a lot. <laughs> and they get, like, frustrated and exasperated. But you're, you're a waterfowl, like... I mean, this game is true to life. Geese are horrible. They are. That's true. <laughs> I did like, produce some pretty good memes. Like, growing up, I had a friend that used to agitate her goose, and then she ran faster than I did, and it would come attack me. <laughs> like, it's a thing. It's a, it's a real thing. Goose is mad, and somebody's going to suffer. And the other thing is, it's, it's a puzzle game, but if you get frustrated and annoyed at the puzzle, which happens because it's a puzzle game, you have an outlet. You can just, like, tear around honking and causing havoc, which is hilarious and a delight to, like, blow off steam as you figure out puzzles. And sometimes doing that is a good way to solve the puzzle, if an inelegant one. But whatever, you're a goose. You don't care about being elegant. Well, so the beautiful thing about that, though, is so oftentimes, like, when you get pissed off at a game, you it will let you make decisions that will have screwed you over. Like, yes. like nothing is, isn't undoable in this game. Like, like if you if you just stop doing anything, the citizens will reset the game. <laughs> well, and also your your goal, your entire goal in the game is to wreck stuff up. So the thing that you naturally do when you get annoyed, well, you're just, that's what you're supposed to be doing anyway. So great, yeah. Right? You're you're progressing the progressing the goal. And like each of the, it's there's so much personality in a really straightforward art style. I don't I don't think I have giggled with mad glee as often in a game as i have with that one in a while and like the most interesting thing about it is like there's a weirdly deep story behind it it's yeah, a like, disturbing there's a more, story there's a lot more going on than i was expecting and i think we, we talked about that at one at like on a show and yeah it's just like that's that's weird like okay so another small ish game that was just charming as hell. Uh, Baba is you, and this was chosen by four of us. Baba is win. This was nearly on my list. It was absolutely on my it's list, and like, it's very much not normally a me game, but I loved it. It was really close to like the last game that that I played that I felt this way about was uh, Thomas is alone, or Thomas was alone. Thomas was alone. Yeah, that game yeah. was also yeah. fantastic. But like. It is it is a super charming game. Um, it takes a few seconds to be indoctrinated into how the game works, but it also keeps mixing things up constantly to where the rules of play are always slightly shifting. So you can't... It doesn't get stale. Sometimes you can shift the rules of play. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's primarily what the game is about. And it's so much fun i feel like it's a game about programming logic like really yeah at the end of the day i yes. mean to, ex to a great extent you know figuring out the game is about like getting rid of your preconceived notions about what these various objects are in the game because any object can be anything you just have to you know change the code for it that water that water doesn't have to be water it can be a wall it can be a wall and water 
Yeah. But it, it very much felt like the same kind of mental process I went through when I started learning to write code. Mm -hmm. Because you go into it with a bunch of preconceived notions when, like, really at the end of the day, you can make things do whatever you want them to do. Like, you may have a limited palette of things that you want that you can actually accomplish the goal with, but, like, there, there there's no not being able to do a thing. It's just the amount of time it takes to do it. Speaking of time, this game does not have any time pressure really at all. It lets you roll back your turns. Yeah. Is that Sometimes there are some moving things that cause some amount of time pressure, but... Yeah, but that it's so huge for a game like that, where you want to have time to puzzle through things and not just beat your head against a timer. And this is another game where, you know, it's primitive art style, but it absolutely fits what's going on. Like, it is fine. It is... I, I, I could not see this in any other way. And that's part of what led to the charming nature of it was how primitive the artwork ultimately is. Maybe think of Dr. Katz, the cartoon. Oh, yeah. It's got the, like, wobbly lines. But, but calmingly so. You got me thinking about how much I would love, like, a Dr. Katz or a home movies video game. Oh, God. I haven't oh, thought about home movies in a really long time. <laughs> Uh, early Adult Swim. Yep. <laughs> so we've been going through this list way faster than I expected this to. Because we are now at the last pick on our list. Um, and this one had five people choose it. And that is Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. I mean, it was just a really impressive game in every respect. Yeah. I mean, it's probably the best Final Fantasy game I've played. <laughs> it's definitely the the story of the Zono is my favorite of the FF14 story. Yeah, very much same. Agreed. And it it wasn't just added on, it was really sort of a culmination of a lot of things, which felt good. Yeah. It tied up so many loose ends that have been sitting out there for a while and like it's not a story that could have been told without those existing, I don't think. But it also left so many, so many. <laughs> it answered a lot of questions, and it asked even more, even bigger questions. And I love it for that. But, like, it tried a lot of ambitious things. Um, like, there's a whole bunch of tech that was created for this game. And I know we've talked about it, but, like, they changed the way that the dialogue system worked to where it's a more personal angle, a more cinematic angle of the discussions. And as a result, like the whole game felt more, less MMO and more just a really good RPG. I mean, I've been saying they could make a single player game out of the FF14 story since, basically since that was one. It sounds like they're redoing the parts before that to maybe make that also true. Yeah. And like, it's a, it's such a, it was such a good story. It, it, everything going on there fired on all cylinders with some like, the stuff that frustrated me about it was pretty minimal. Like, my class was Misery to Play, and so I switched to a different one because the game makes it relatively easy to do that. How much additional story has been released since launch? There has been one major patch since launch. Yeah. Starting to go into how we're going to clean up some of those loose ends. <laughs> yeah. Also, yikes. <laughs> quite, a few, quite a few of them. Yeah. yeah I, th I think that's the only downside with Final Fantasy expansions for me is that because they they put so much effort into the launch, they take in a, a very long time off between, or a longer than normal time off between the launch of the game and the first patch. And it's usually during that period that I end up losing interest for a while and yeah, ultimately re like return at some point to snap up multiple patches worth of content. And that's usually what I do is I burn really hard and then i cool off for a while and then somewhere like in the mid to late expansion cycle i catch up again but i but i enjoy doing that like it 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 rather than being like the forever game that i'm logged into every single day i feel like i can do other stuff i don't feel beholden to i log in constantly to this game even if i'm not feeling it just to stay caught up it's like oh no 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 i'm gonna take a break for a few months i'll come back do some more content catch up on things possibly duck out again until there's more but i'll pretty much always be back 
Yeah. I mean, and I don't ever, like, subscription juggle with this game. Like, I've been subbed forever at this point. Because I know at some point I will come back. Um, it's just, like, partially in my mind, I'm still of the, the mindset that, oh, MMOs are forever games. Like, I really should be playing them 24-7. Um, but I've not reached the point where it feels comfortable to not do that. So it always kind of feels, at least on some level, that I'm failing at playing the game by being detached for, from it for periods of time. Yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, I, I did subscription juggle, but now I have a house, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hell am I giving that up after what I went through to get it? Yeah. Yeah, I lost a house after subscription juggling, and I think that was what was enough to make me say that I am okay with this not being a forever game, and that I will just come back to it on my own terms exactly when I feel like it, because losing that house made me sad and angry. Yeah, I was looking into, I was looking into the house, and it was like, no, I don't, I don't want to commit this much, and I don't have to. Yeah, but I'm perfectly happy to keep coming back to this game, on my own terms when there's new stuff I want to look at. And yep. I am positive that there will be new stuff I want to look at. So I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. There's always going to be something worth coming back for. And honestly, part of me is like, well, I'm sad that I'm not, you know, raiding, but I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. Leading raids is exhausting. It It's just exhausting to do. And... I more or less have just as much fun going back and face rolling it later. Because then it's like, we still win, and I still get cosmetics, which by the time I can beat those fights are what I'm getting anyway, or, you know, side grades. And there's still a bunch of like, oh, haha, that would have killed us. <laughs> Versus, oh, we've died to that mechanic for eight weeks in a row. And people are like actively mad and frustrated and not showing up. And I'm going to get them to show up. Like all of the logistics, I I don't have the the interest on in being on the cutting edge of anything. Yeah. I, I think my biggest challenge, though, like is having been a guild leader and a raid leader, I always feel guilty for not being around. Like if that makes sense. Like there's a certain package of guilt that I've never been able to shake. That like to the ones that all that are around twenty four seven in a in a specific game, like I always feel bad for not being around. I definitely understand that. Same for me, for me. It's also not just the oh, I'm too tired to raid or try to organize a raid, but you know, there was a time where throwing my face against pugs was the height of entertainment, and those days are also gone. Yeah. I know I have friends who still do it and that's how they get their rating done and uh, you know I I salute them but my time of doing that is gone. <laughs> but I know that when there's new stuff my friends will be around and we'll roll through it together and that's all I really need. Yep. Yep. And one of the cool things that we did a lot of that was super fun was going and doing all the old raids from the previous content that we'd never done before. And, like, that yeah. was cool. I still and we go back cool. and kill Omega himself. But, yeah, going back and, like, beating up Alexander and the earlier Omega stuff with much less having to be concerned about mechanics <laughs> was, was a lot of fun. Yeah. You can't, you can't just ignore them. It's, mechanics never, like, cease to matter. I mean, but, they, but you they have really a lot more like to use the edge of the arena to kill you. <laughs> Yeah, the the current raids are um, fun. That storyline is like filled with all the worst ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I say coming out of the time travel one from Heaven's Ward. <laughs> I mean, the time travel one was just nonsense ideas. This one seems to be just flat out bad ideas. Yeah. Yes. It's like actively terrible ideas versus questionable ideas. I was going to say versus passively horrible ideas. <laughs> Inactive and I mean, terrible ideas. Continue to humor this ridiculous killing machine in its testing is kind of one of those questionable ideas. And that was the entire theme of the last set of raids. I mean, if we didn't humor it, it was going to blow up the world, right? So, 
Yeah, yes, we're just making it worse, though, <laughs> by completing its testing. Teaching it, training it. Why did we do this? This was a maybe, bad idea. Maybe then we'll get bored and blow up, go blow up somebody else's world. It's we were training Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out because we're the heroes. <laughs> sure we are. Actually because, sure. actually, because Alpha is the hero. <laughs> True facts. Alpha is another video game dog that's good. Alpha is adorable. Has anyone else here tried the Nier raid, the Yorha stuff? Or have you guys not tried it yet? I have not. Okay. I unlocked it, but I did not actually do it. Okay. I I don't know anything about it other than the fact that butt cheeks were nerfed. Oh, but they fixed the butt cheeks, so it's okay. Okay. (laughs) What? (laughs) As a cosmetic drop from the new Alliance raid, there is a 2B outfit. What? And in the most recent minor patch, they accidentally changed it so that it gave you a flatter butt than it used to. You literally get a 2B butt when you equip the bottoms. Yep. They took it out because of clipping when you sat, apparently. Like, I guess your booty was just too powerful, but uh, they converted it. Uh, <laughs> there, there was much, you know, backlash. I was about to say, they they nerfed the most important element of the game for a huge portion of their fan base. Look, I, I have a very specific group of people from Final Fantasy XIV that I follow. They're all people that deeply cared about this. I'm more amused by the part about the outfit. It's not in any way gender specific. No, no, no. I mean, that that's that's a massive thing that I have to give credit to Final Fantasy XIV. Like, yeah, man, other, I... than, other than a handful <laughs> of outfits... It didn't yeah. used to be this good about it. Yeah, oh, I've gotten a lot can, better. I am happy to be able to wear my bunny outfit. <laughs> Finally, after two expansions. So that was our list. Any, like, quickie honorable mentions? Uh, I'll go for it. Uh, I'm, I would like to put Yakuza 0 on the honor roll. I feel like it's... I didn't want to put it on my full list because I didn't actually start playing it in 2019. And it's certainly not a game from 2019. But I've I've been playing it again. And it's it's just so good and I'm entertaining. So I'm so excited about other people playing that game because they're so good. It's so, like, there's no series of words that I can put together to describe that game effectively enough to make somebody be like, oh, yeah, that seems like a game I want to play. But it's so, it's so fun. The game is so fun. It's oh, absolutely it ridiculous. It's like one moment, it's like, okay, now I'm engaging in an incredibly dramatic fight with one of the lieutenants in a sewer. And now I'm helping a dude that got his school uniform pants stolen by some weirdo. Yeah. So I have, I've never played any of the Yakuza games. Is this a good one to start with? Yes. It is a fantastic one Zero to start is with. Zero the place to start right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Zero and, is the prequel is the prequel to the series, so it's a very good place to start. Yeah, yeah. You, you there's you don't need to know anything about the later games. Like there are some characters that you'll be like, oh, here's this person that's going to show up in the later games. But other than that, um, and it's and it is a modern game because it came out two years ago, maybe three. And yeah, it's it's really really good. And then and they have since remade Yakuza one and two. So there are modern versions of them for modern consoles now. And then I I think 3 and up were already on modern consoles. Not sure. So I've got two honorable mentions, um, and they'll be really quick. Uh, first one is the Shadowkeep expansion for Destiny 2 is really good. It is. And the seasonal content that came along post its launch, I really like how they're doing that. I mean, it's the Fortnite mastery path concept but like it's fun it, there's a bunch of interesting things to unlock um the events that go along with it are really good like they're really good addition season of undying uh, was pretty good season of dawn i think is better <laughs> yeah yeah the sun sundial is way better than the vex invasion and, and i like the vex Saint invasion 14. also same 14 yeah like it's it's more interesting like it 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 undoes some of the things that annoyed me about Vex Invasion, um, and it's also a better version of the Menagerie. So, yeah, they, they basically took the Menagerie system and used it again, which is, yep. is fine. Well, And they fixed the problems I had with the Menagerie, so like, I, I am happy to see them evolving a thing. Um, 
So second game that's honorable mention is Kind Word. And I, I didn't put it on my list because I feel real weird calling it a game. It's more of a experiment in kindness. Um, but like, I really enjoyed it. And I would absolutely suggest this game if you ever find yourself being in a low spot and need cheering up because you're going to be in a sandbox where people say nice things to each other and it's totally anonymous. So it's, it's this weird case where like anonymity didn't end up in toxicity. Like, I think there's an element of moderation going on to assist with that, but yeah, yeah but I don't know how much they can moderate it. Cause like it's a really small outfit and there's a lot of messages that are going back and forth in it. I know there are like three discord communities devoted to, to it. So it it is interesting. It was also a delight, and it was a runner-up for me. There were a number of games that I played this year that were just delightful, and I really I really enjoyed that. Um, I do have one. I do have one runner-up. Uh, f- we'll probably talk about it more soon, but for Coder's benefit, uh, Pathfinder Two released this year. Um, I don't know. I have I've I have not played enough of I have not played enough of it to have a to have an opinion to have a fully formed opinion um there's some stuff that i really like about it and certainly it has consumed the like tabletop role-playing conversation with our group for quite some time um on paper it's really really cool and i like it a whole lot uh i think that i think that with a few more books and more like expansive content I will like it more than I like D and D five. Uh, it's not there yet because one of the things that it doesn't one of the things that it doesn't really do is promote any of the player fantasies that I really like. It doesn't support kitchen very well. It doesn't. It it's not just that, but that is one of the things. That's one of the things. Um, yeah, it doesn't really support the blended martial and magic character type. Um, but like that's a fixable problem, I think. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing about it that I don't think can't be fixed with a book release, which is a really good place for an RPG book to be. Um, we'll probably talk about it more once Kodra is back, but but I feel like it was worth mentioning because it's it's really neat. It's really interesting. Um, I, the the I mean I'm playing in one and running two games of it, so I certainly like it quite a bit. Well, that sounds like that was our games of the year show. Um... Again, we don't really pick a game of the year. It's just us talking through like the things that were important to us this year. So, um, as always, I think we'd love to uh, hear some of your choices. So, uh, respond in the various means that you can respond to the show. Um, any final thoughts before we uh, do the say good night thing? Death Stranding was robbed. <laughs> <sighs> Best postal delivery simulator ever anyway hopefully you enjoy the show and we will see you again next week good night good night good night good night see you